First up, Elon Musk is buying Twitter for $44 billion. How might he change the social media platform? We'll find out what the experts say ahead. Find out how planes, trains, and other forms of public transportation are making the mask mandate optional. But will that change? Stanford nurses walk the picket line. Find out what they're demanding just ahead. From the School of Journalism and Mass Communications at San Jose State University, your source for what's happening with a fresh perspective on today's issues. You're watching Update News. Welcome to Update News. I'm Brianna Mathal. And I'm Savannah Ceballos. Twitter has been trending on Twitter this week. Why? If you haven't heard, Tesla owner Elon Musk is paying $44 billion to buy the social media platform. If you use Twitter, you might be asking, how did this happen and how will it change the platform? We put those questions to the experts. Billionaire Elon Musk first made Twitter an offer the board abruptly refused. Then board members moved to defend the site from a possible hostile takeover. Their method, the so-called poison pill defense. This is part of the negotiation uh, techniques because uh, the first offer is usually not a good offer. So this is a well-known technique by Mason. We're not easy. You have to do better to convince us that you want to buy the company. But then by Monday night, Musk had sweetened the deal and the board unanimously approved the $44 billion buyout. So why did the board of directors accept the takeover bid despite the poison pill? Falkner says the poison pill method gave the board time to make a decision. Elon Musk didn't go buy more shares. Um, and at the end of the day, nobody else came in to try to buy them as well. They don't think they could do as well as $54.20 a share themselves. So then they go with Elon Musk's bid. So how will Musk's ownership impact free speech and banned accounts? Banafa says Musk might want to make changes, but there are hurdles to overcome. The thing about it is it's easy said than, you know, apply. Um, I definitely you're going to find a lot of difficulties with this. He says 77% of Twitter users are from other countries, and not all those countries allow freedom of speech. That could be a sticking point for his future foreign business endeavors. So how long is the process before Musk is officially the owner? The thing about it is they still have to go through the voting of the shareholders. And um, it's technically speaking within a year, this year, everything will be finished. It's as close to final as it needs to be, but no, it's never final till it's completely done. Twitter is one of the social media platforms popular with students. So what's the reaction on campus to the buyout? Reporter Sandow has that part of the story. Opinions from students on Elon Musk buying Twitter are pretty divided. Some like the idea of the billionaire bringing more free speech to the platform. Others believe his money could have gone elsewhere. That's what we discovered in this week's Stay of the Spartans. So long as he doesn't abuse his power, um, I guess it'd be fine. I don't really see a big thing that he could do with it other than monetize it any further. His money definitely could have gone elsewhere for something more productive and beneficial in the world. Um, I also agree with that. It could have gone it, but I feel like the only reason he did that is because ego yeah. and he got stepped on and he doesn't like being told no, obviously. So as a man of power, he he didn't want to be told no, so he took over. Elon is well known for his tweets on Twitter on that I think uh, each and every one of us know. Um, so I, I see that uh, he has seen a lot of potential to take Twitter to a bigger standard. So I, I believe uh, th there would be a lot of things running in his mind to make Twitter a better platform than it is now. I think it's cool, you know, he definitely, definitely has the money to go out there and, you know, buy a big company like that. Um, I feel like him, him owning Twitter is just only going to make him bigger and more and more rich. So well, I, I'd say I support it. Um, I think that Twitter is sort of like the public square. And from what I've seen, that there seems to be a disproportionate amount of censorship um, on, on one side of the political spectrum, namely the conservative opinions. Elon Musk on Twitter is going to be extremely interesting based on all of his opinions and all of his tweets before. Uh, one, he hates pronouns. So I'm just hoping he doesn't take down everyone's account on Twitter. While Twitter board did approve of the $44 billion offer last week, the deal won't be finalized until the shareholders vote and the feds sh sign up on it. In San Jose, Sandow, Update News. 
Nurses are often thought of as heroes. They are who we turn to in the hospitals when we're sick or injured. But many of those nurses at Stanford Hospital were out on a picket line this week. The reason? The demonstrators say they are fighting burnout and need more support. Zoma Kanawi has that story. The Committee for Recognition of Nursing Achievement, or CRONA, is a union for nurses at Stanford Healthcare and the Lucille Packard Children's Hospital. The union says 93% of its nurses voted to authorize a strike. Striking nurses said they want their voices heard. They're asking for sustainable pay, more staffing, and better patient care and safety resources. We want to make sure that nurses have what they need to be attracted to nursing as a career, to stay in nursing as a career, and to have what they need to be able to provide the best patient care possible at this world-class institution. Nurses are in the strike to show their support for each other and their patients. Their message out on the picket line is to advocate for a better working environment as well as better patient care and safety. We don't want to be on strike. We want to be inside the hospital. We want to be taking care of our patients, but we also need better staffing and better wages, medical retirement. We need better mental health, and we need the hospitals to support us to do that. Stanford Healthcare released its proposal prior to the strike. The proposal's main points include a 5% wage increase upon ratification, 4% increase on their first year anniversary, healthcare plans, retirement health plans, and mental health and wellness programs. Despite the proposal from Stanford, the nurses continued with the strike to share their message and purpose behind it. And for Stanford, um, we j just want Stanford to know that um, we love our patients, we care for our patients, and we're here for providing patient safety and quality of care. Some of the demonstrators are from the community. They joined the picket lines to show their support. Even if your daughter isn't a nurse or you're, you don't have a relative that's a nurse, you got to come and support these nurses. They're here every day. They're the patient advocates, and they are here for the patients. And Anybody can be a patient. Crona met with Stanford Healthcare following the strike. Their most recent update shows they will continue to regroup and discuss the proposals again. In Palo Alto, I'm Sulma Kanawi, Update News. Even though the federal travel mask mandate has been lifted, you might want to keep a mask handy, depending on where you are. Not every part of California is following the new rules, and the Justice Department is appealing the court decision that struck down the mandate. Confused, reporter Rodri Smith has the details. In a whirlwind 10 days, that's when the federal judge in Florida struck down the federal travel mask mandate. She said the Center for Disease Control and Prevention had overstepped its authority. It meant you no longer have to wear a mask on planes, trains, buses, and subways unless you want to. Airlines dropped that requirement that same day. Carmen Escamilla says she's happy it's finally been lifted and she won't be wearing a mask. Um, I'm over that part of it. Um, I don't, you know, care if the person next to me sitting is wearing a mask. Um, like I said, it's everyone's choice. So if they feel more comfortable, I guess. Um, but I feel comfortable enough now to, like, not wear it. Some rideshare services like Uber and Lyft follow suit. Slowly, some other transportation agencies also dropped the requirements, but not all. On a local level, some counties like Los Angeles still require you to wear a mask in the airport even if you don't have to wear one on the plane. Health officials cite a spike in new COVID cases as a reason. A new Associated Press poll found that 56% of Americans prefer to keep their mask on while traveling. We spotted some passengers wearing a mask and others relieved to take them off. Emily Santa Cruz says she still will be wearing her mask when traveling. Absolutely, I wear my mask all the time at work, at school, everywhere into the store uh, because I had my grandma, my grandpa who was, you know, very sick. The Justice Department said is appealing the judge's order. They argue the authority to make a health decision should be left to the scientists at the CDC. So stay tuned. In San Jose, I'm Rodri Smith, Update News. When we come back. San Jose State may look very different 20 years from now. Find out the new plans to make the campus more sustainable. I'm Cameron Landfield, and I'm going to bring you the weather after this break. When we come back, Netflix is losing subscribers and find out what the streaming service plans to do about it.
At San Jose State, we really do learn by doing. This is my first semester working on our award-winning newspaper, The Spartan Daily. But my whole time here really has been about real-world skill building. Professors like Diane Garazzi continue their work in journalism while bringing that knowledge back to us in the classroom each semester. Then we're on The Spartan Daily, Update News, or The Spear. We get to put all that into practice. We even get to work with cutting edge tools like our new VR lab, where we get to learn new ways of real storytelling using 3D virtual reality. Our students have many opportunities to work in newsrooms that function like the ones they will encounter in their professional careers. Here in Update News, for instance, we produce a weekly show that is aired on local access television in San Jose, and we produce video news that is digital first. Students will get experience as producers, anchors, and field reporters. The Spartan Daily, our award-winning student newspaper, has not missed a scheduled publication date in more than 80 years and remains one of the longest-standing papers of its kind in the Western United States. Through classroom instruction and our newsroom labs, we give our students the tools to succeed and create their own bright futures. Learn by doing. If you're interested in joining our program, visit our website for more information. What will the San Jose State's university campus look like in 20 years? The answer is it will likely look very different with new buildings, more open space, and innovative designs. A plan two years in the making aims to make the campus more sustainable. Reporter Christian Trujano has that, more on that story. The university has been working with architects and planners. This week, they held a workshop to get community input. Imagine walking on campus 20 years after you graduate and barely being able to recognize your own school. Well, that just might be the case with the new proposals in San Jose State's Campus Master Plan. San Jose State is going to transform a lot in the next 20 years. It's had some changes, but there's going to be significant changes, especially to kind of keep up and match up with what else is changing in San Jose. SJSU community members were invited to check out some of the proposed changes during the workshop this week. It was an opportunity to provide feedback and ideas to improve the campus. But the main topic during the workshop was sustainability. It includes infrastructure changes to old and new buildings to incorporate renewable energy sources. Other changes will include transportation and mobility, all designed to reduce our carbon footprint. You know, some of us will be around in 20 years and some of us won't. And so that way of really planning now to set that groundwork so that the development through the next 20 years really is a benefit moving forward. Developers are also looking at making it easier for students to get around. Whether you um, use a wheelchair, whether you're walking, whether you use a scooter, that's all going to be integrated and those are plans that are happening and improvements that are ongoing. The master plan is still being drafted. The final draft will be released later this fall so you still have time to voice your opinion. Although we may not benefit from it, as alums from this institution, it's important that it reflects our values and our needs um, and that we be the voice for future students. In San Jose, I'm Christian Trujano for Update News. Students can provide input by leaving comments. Just go to the sjsu.edu slash master plan and go to the leave feedback online section. In San Jose, I'm Christian Trujano for Update News. Is there trouble in the video streaming world? For the first time in about 10 years, streaming service Netflix lost hundreds of thousands of subscribers. So what caused that drop and how will Netflix fix it? And what are consumers kids saying? There are reports that Netflix lost 200,000 subscribers in the beginning months of this year. The company's stock dropped 30%. Some subscribers say there just may be too many competing streaming services out there. Now with Netflix, HBO, Hulu, it's just, it gets very in, inconvenient and just very complicated. In order to stop the decline of subscribers, Netflix wants to stop viewers from password sharing. The company reports that many households are sharing passwords with users outside their homes. In hopes of capturing some of its lost revenue, Netflix is looking into password sharing here in the States. It's something the company has already tested in Peru, Costa Rica, and Chile. One option is they could add a new feature with additional fee for users outside of their homes. Password sharing is interesting because Netflix knows that you're sharing your password already, like all the streaming services do. In fact, the more expensive live services, they've already cracked down on this. 
your Netflix subscription could get cheaper. The company is talking about the possibility of adding ads or commercial breaks. Watch a TV or like a movie without getting interrupted by ads. So I feel like if Netflix was to do that, they would lose a lot of customers, including me. If Netflix goes ahead with the ad plan, experts say it would likely follow the lead of some other streaming companies. Netflix could offer two tiers of service, a cheaper monthly fee if you're willing to accept ads, or you could stick with your current monthly fee for ad-free streaming. And now we have Cameron Langfield with the weather. Good afternoon, this is Cameron Langfield with Update News. Let's get into the weather. This week, we can expect more rain chances, mostly for the North Bay. Breezy and gusty conditions for the entire Bay Area. And then we'll move forward into May, changing our pattern, possibly bringing even more wet conditions. Now, let's take a look at the futurecast. Here you can see some low clouds blowing through Thursday. We get our first North Bay rain chance here Friday in the morning. More low clouds blowing on through our region through Saturday. Clearing out, and Sunday we've got another rain chance here, Sunday 5 p.m. Look at that blob over Eureka. Let's take a look at the seven-day forecast for Santa Cruz. 60 to begin on Thursday there, Friday 64. 66 for the whole weekend, mid-60s for the rest of the week. Bit of cloudy conditions too. For Oakland, bit brighter out, 67 there on Friday, 69, 68 through the weekend, and then high 60, 68 for the entire week. San Francisco, you can see those gusty conditions there on Thursday, down to 60. 65 for the weekend, mid-60s for the rest of the week. Got a bit of clouds as well. And for San Jose, beautiful sunny Friday, sunny Saturday and Sunday, 75. 74 for the remainder of the entire week. This has been Cameron Landfield with the Meteorology and Climate Science Program for San Jose State. Let's get back to the desk. When we come back, We'll take you to see a brand new mural dedicated to the Chicano community of San Jose. And stick around to see how San Jose State's legacy of poetry turned out this year. A new mural celebrates San Jose's Chicano and Hispanic communities. The work acknowledges several San Jose legends. Reporter Jesus Teletude takes us to the unveiling where the community honored the arts and its artists. It was a celebration of San Jose's Hispanic culture at Roosevelt Park. It followed the reveal of a new ethnic mural telling the community's storied history. It's just, it's beauty, right? It, 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 you, when you, when you, whether you know anything about the mural or not, when you see a mural like this, you're, you're drawn to it. Your eyes are drawn to it, right? It, it, and it really paints just a tremendous picture and a canvas for our city. The three artists that created the artwork called the piece Leyendas de San Jose, meaning Legends of San Jose. It depicts several figures of the Chicano lowrider community, honoring their contributions and sacrifice. When we started the mural, we weren't 100% um, educated on all of the people involved in the mural. And uh, the community kind of came together and actually gave us more information and more insight where we learned more things every day about the people on the mural. Family members of the mural icons spoke at Roosevelt Park to honor the memory of the relatives and laud the art. 
One of the figures on the mural is Sony Madrid, the founder of Lowrider Magazine and an alumnus of San Jose State University. Sony's son Mario, who was part of the ceremonial Aztec dance, praised the cultural significance of the artwork, but added that more San Jose history should be acknowledged. You know, when I first saw it, right away, my first instinct was, oh, my dad's on a mural now, you know, that's cool. But then at the same time, it sparked an interest in, there's a lot more people from San Jose in the community that deserve to be on a mural also. But it's, it's inspiration. You know, hey, let's put a bunch of more, let's, let's get the, the women on there, you know what I mean? There's a lot of strong women leadership here. In San Jose, Jesus Teletude, Update News. In honor of Poetry Month, San Jose State held the 15th annual Legacy of Poetry. Poetry may have the ability to help us heal, but in the month we celebrate Earth Day, some are asking if poetry can help save the planet. Niku Parcizade has the story. I lower my tone ever so slightly because my presence takes up the room and I glow too brightly. The San Jose State College of Humanities and Arts, its association of poets and writers, were reading poetry on Earth Day. What their hope was that some of the poems can help inspire you to do more to save our planet. I'm trying to like change people's minds about what poetry is. Poetry like recuperates people and like that's what saves the planet. Organizers said poetry can also inspire and offer hope to a broad and diverse audience. I basically write based off my experience um, as a black woman in this not so great world. Um, so really, um, it's poetry getting out there to also find other people who look like me, who resonate with my story. I need some time to breathe, I'm a communicator. I get in my modes, I don't speak. I think I don't know how to grieve, I think. For poetry, I mean, it just, you know, it, it really, it's really important to have a space that gives you a sense of community. Having a space where you can go and create art and see art and experience art um, is really important. They were asking poetry lovers to join them through April 24th. In San Jose, I'm Nico Parcizade, Update News. And that does it for this week's edition of Update News. For all of us here, thank you for joining us and see you next week.